Hi, my name is Tracy Hessel, and I'm the Associate Medical Director of Pediatrics at the Marin Community Clinics. I want to thank you all for joining us tonight for this new and very different version of our annual solstice event. I've worked at the clinic for 16 years, and I have to say that this year, more than any other, has underscored for me the importance of the support for our community. We've relied on our community partners who are helping hold together this somewhat tenuous safety net, and we rely on all of you who have shown up to support our clinics and our patients for many years, even this year when we ask you to do that from your own homes and from mine. I think it's important to acknowledge these truly unprecedented times. We've all been affected in so many different ways by this pandemic, experiencing isolation, uncertainty, loss, stress. Add to that the many emotions invoked as our nation struggles with the pain that's a result of a history of systemic racism. Despite that, or maybe in light of it, it feels particularly meaningful to be able to continue with our solstice tradition with you all this year. I know I'm grateful to be able to step back for a moment to celebrate with you some of the successes over the past year and to express our gratitude for the work and support of our MCC family and friends and be inspired as we honor our community champions who each have impacted the health of our community. We're grateful to all of our sponsors. Your help is vital to sustain our mission. All of our supporters are listed on the website. However, I wanna take a moment to acknowledge this year's health leader, Farm MedQuest, and our prevention partners, Aero Benefits Group, Sutter Health Novato Community Hospital, Susan and Dennis Gillardi, and Nancy P. and Richard K. Robbins Family Foundation. Thank you all so much. Your support allows us to provide high quality, compassionate health care to over 38,000 of your fellow Marin residents at a time when the stresses on our clinics and our patients couldn't be greater. One of my favorite things about our Solstice events has been how it brings our community together, allowing our staff, our community partners, and our long-term supporters to all connect. While this year we can't stand together in the garden, with technology, you actually can mingle with some of the other guests. We've never done this before either, but we invite you to try it out. On the left side of your screen, select networking, and then choose mingle with guests. You'll be connected randomly with one of the other guests for a short conversation. After about two minutes, you'll be connected to a second guest. If it doesn't work, or if you decide not to participate, just sit back and enjoy the music and the images, and we'll meet back in a couple of minutes. Good luck. Good luck.
Hello, my name is Benita McLaren. I'm the Director of Health and Human Services for the County of Marin. I want to say a special congratulations to the Marin Community Clinics for their great work in supporting the County of Marin during this tremendous and terrible pandemic. Their work in providing testing to underserved communities as well as ensuring education and outreach on what the role of the pandemic is and also their work in ensuring uh, food insecurity has been met through food distribution center expansion. Thank you for your tremendous efforts as well as your work in ensuring that we have full equity and justice for all people in Marin County. More than ever, we rely on others to help take care of our patients. It feels particularly meaningful to recognize the work being done by this year's community health champions. Tonight, you'll hear from Dr. Matt Willis, our youth honoree, Melissa Osheroff, and Dr. Tim Sowerby. Together, they represent the leadership we've relied on to respond to the pandemic, the commitment and generosity to ensure that our patients get the specialty care that they need, and the dedication of our youth to greater social justice. And now I'd like to introduce our Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Mitesh Popat. Many of you who've worked with Mitesh over the years have appreciated that he has the rare ability in a physician to think about the big picture issues that are critical to sustain our clinic, while always supporting us in making sure that we prioritize the health and well-being of our staff and our patients. Over the past few years, his leadership has allowed us to embark as a clinic on learning how to address trauma and how to be advocates for social justice and equity in our community. I'm really proud of the exciting and important work that he's made possible. Hi everyone, welcome to our 2020 Summer Solstice event and thank you Tracy uh, for your kind introduction. I uh, really want to take a moment to appreciate all of you and your support of Marine Community Clinics during these uh, challenging times. Uh, early in March, we took decisive action to implement a number of changes to ensure safety of our staff and our patients. Uh, these included very early on adopting masking protocols uh, as well as other protocols to ensure flow of patients through the clinic is smooth. And of course, not, I can't uh, forget to mention telehealth. Uh, telehealth has been tremendous and very important for us to be able to deliver care to our patients. So thank, thanks to all of you for your support. Many of you have supported us uh, during this challenging time and without your support, it would have been uh, very difficult for us to deliver on our uh, on the care and the excellence we provide to the community. Uh, in just a minute, we'll be honoring, a few minutes, we'll be honoring our three honorees, uh, our community health champions. You've heard about them already. I'll hear, you'll hear about them some more. They're, they've made a phenomenal contribution to Marin, Marin Community Clinics, to the community at large. And uh, Dr. Matt Willis, Dr. Tim Sowerby and youth honoree Melissa Osheroff have been fantastic and done amazing work um, for us, for the, for the community at large. Um, I'll speak briefly about the mission of Marin Community Clinics and how it ties in with, our, uh, with equity, with racial justice, and a lot of the things that we're talking about today. Uh, with the work we do every day, we are leveling the playing field, as you've heard us say before. What does that mean? That means we stand for the underserved communities, and we believe that they should have equal access uh, to health services and health care. What does that mean? That means we have to do so in ways that may be different from other people, and that's called equity. The principle of equity is that in order to achieve equal health outcomes, we must and may, do, may need to do different things for different communities. So uh, again, thank you all, and thank you all for your support. Uh, let me speak briefly about our fund need that's going to be coming up later in, in the program. Uh, we are aiming to raise about $100,000, and we'd love to exceed that goal. It's going to go to supporting three key areas. Uh, the first is modifications of our dental operatories uh, to make them safer for patient care. 
And what that involves is what are called extraoral suction devices that are essentially fancy vacuums above the patient's mouth, if you can imagine that. And ceiling mounted uh, air filtration and UV light uh, devices that also should provide greater um, safety to both patients as well as staff that are providing the dental care. The second area that we're going to be raising funds for is enhanced behavioral health services. As you can imagine during these challenging times and many, many of you may have experienced some loneliness or isolation and you can imagine how that can be really challenging for some people. We are seeing a significant increase in need for behavioral health services in our patients and so the second area of focus that we're raising funds for as part of our COVID response is to expand behavioral health services. The third area that we are looking to raise funds for are to support ongoing support for our respiratory clinics. Our respiratory clinics are where we do our testing for COVID-19. They are uh, patients are seen in person. They've been screened in by a provider who has uh, seen the patient virtually first by telephone or video consultation and then determined that this patient should be seen in person and, the, and may need uh, further evaluation through a COVID-19 test. So these are the three areas that we're raising funds for tonight. Uh, dentistry and making it safe, expanding behavioral health services, and ongoing support for our respiratory clinics uh, to provide COVID-19 testing. Um, again, I wish, wish to thank you for your support now during these challenging times and always. It means a tremendous amount to us. It allows us to deliver excellence in care. It allows us to uh, deliver on our mission of health equity. So thank you again and appreciate all that you do for Marin Community Clinics. Hi everyone, I'm with Dr. Matt Willis, uh, one of our 2020 Community Health Champions. Uh, I would like to first start off by saying that we uh, decided to honor Dr. Willis prior to COVID-19. Um, that's food for thought. Uh, he's certainly shown that there's, bit, there's good reason for us nominating him for this award. Uh, and uh, I personally have appreciated his leadership through the years, um, his advocacy, uh, his collaboration with Marin Community Clinics, and really his vision for public health being um, inclusive, of being beyond, say, traditional public health and really incorporating uh, kind of community health and working with the um, federally qualified health centers like ours in delivering on um, health care uh, outcomes for our community. D Dr. Willis, thank you for all that you've done for Marin Community Clinics. And um, here's an award from Marin Community Clinics for um, 2020's Community Health Champion. So thank you. Thank you. That's six, that's six feet? That's six feet. OK. We've, we can't even touch. It's probably more than six feet. Uh, and I've we got, haven't disinfected this. Yeah. <laughs> and I've got a, a certificate of recognition from Assemblymember Mark Levine and Senator Mike McGuire. Uh, and I'll read what's on it uh, because I think it's quite good. It's presented in celebration of your service as an internal medicine physician at Marin Community Clinics, your innovative collaborative work in co-founding the RxSafe Marin Coalition, um, and your proactive approach to public health care. We are grateful for your leadership in the COVID-19 effort in Marin and in the Bay Area, which has saved many lives. So. Dr. Matt Willis. So thanks, Dr. Willis. Do you have any comments or cons uh, initial thoughts that you want to share before we move into a few questions? Well, it's, it's an honor to, to be awarded this way um, for, um, I mean, for work that I think has been natural to our collaboration all along with, with Marine Community Clinics. You know, I was, I was a clinician with Marine Community Clinics for a year before I became a health officer. And, I just feel a special connection and a kindred um, relationship with with you and with with the entire crew, um, and I feel really well supported in in our common mission or to to 
promote health equity, you know, health for all in Marin. It's a simple vision, but uh, it's not easy to get there, and it mm -hmm. takes a lot of dedicated people. And um, I'm just I'm I'm honored to be recognized by by an institution that I that I respect so much. I, I read recently in, in a newspaper article that public health officers are really having a hard time. Seven have resigned across the state. How are you holding up through all this? Yeah, I mean, this has been you know I think no one who signed up as as a public health officer would have possibly imagine that this is the role that we would be playing. You know, we're, we're not uh, elected, you know, politicians, uh, mm -hmm. and yet there's been sort of a thrust into the, into the limelight in a certain kind of way. Um, and it's been, I think it's been a challenge. You know, we're, we're trying to help our communities respond to what is one of the most profound disruptions of our, of our everyday life and one mm -hmm. of the most profound threats to our health. Um, and we take that very seriously. Um, and it's, it's a lot of work, so, you know, we're reaching now 100 days. We just passed the 100-day mark of our of our mobilization of our emergency response center, um, and uh, we keep saying this is a you know a marathon and not a sprint. But I have to say, each of those 100 days has has felt like a sprint in itself, <laughs> and uh, so there's some fatigue I think that sets in. Um, yeah. And then there's also you know I think trying to, and I think this is familiar to a lot of clinicians, is this experience of working with with the community or a patient. Who's, who may be afraid, who with a prognosis may not be great. I mean, we are going to experience more illness, more death in this community, and, and trying to hold that mm. on behalf of, of a community um, can be a challenge and, and put you, in, I think, in the line of fire for a lot of, a lot of criticism um, mm -hmm. and, and also praise. And, um, and I think it's just a, you know, it's a challenge to sort of find that balance and stay the course, recognizing that this is probably going to be with us for at least another year. Yeah, as our former CEO used to say, no good deed goes unpunished. So I think right. I appreciate mean, there's, your leadership. There's, there's some of the, you know, <laughs> blaming the messenger is definitely yep. you know you're part of this. But I think you know the, the partnerships. I think the, the most important thing for me is is that I'm not alone. You know, yeah. I mean, this is all about we're working together on this. Um, and I think some people don't always appreciate how collaborative this actually is. I mean, sometimes I'm the face of the response, but it's a, it's a tremendous, it's a huge team, um, including Marin Community Clinics and all of our other partners, really stepping forward on behalf of the community. So, so what motivates you in, you know, how, how did you get started in public health or what, you know, what, you know, what, what drives you every day? With yeah, all I these mean, challenges, especially. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of it is an outgrowth of, of, of what I loved about being a doctor at Marin Community Clinics. You know, it's um, just taking that, you know, regard for an individual patient and really applying it to, to a community as a whole. Um, where I went to public health, there was a sort of a phrase edged over the, the, the entranceway that said, the highest attainable standard of health is the fundamental right of every human being. And that's from the Declaration of Health and Human Rights. And... Um, and if you really believe that, you know, if you really, every human, like all, mm -hmm. um, there's, your, there's your life's work, like right there, because we, we know that um, the stage is not set for us to actually achieve that goal, that, that there are historical barriers to that, to that vision of health for all that um, make your, your work each and every day um, challenging and meaningful. Um, but if you're, you know, I think of public health as sort of, you know, we're, we're wellness merchants. Like, we're just trying to promote well-being and thriving, f physical, mental, social, emotional well-being. Um, and it's just really satisfying to work with, with people like you, you know, Marin Community Clinics and others who share that vision and that, and that, that goal. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's what gets me up every day. We're having a dialogue about, you know, to, to dovetail on what you just said to, uh, about racial justice in this country. And... Can you speak to race and health outcomes, and what are some things that we can do actionably to make strides in health equity for all, or, or some of the things that the way you think about it um, to move the needle? Yeah, I mean, I think that you know this this pandemic has um, has brought into I think the larger sort of social awareness a lot of things that have been. You know, people didn't know there was such thing as a public health officer before. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but, but but more than that, you know, the 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 role of of inequities. I mean, the mo the movement that's happening with with George Floyd right now, uh, murder, is a sign. I think that there's a, a sort of an awareness that's being raised around things that we on the on the front lines and you know safety net 
providers have always known, yeah. which is uh, the conditions, the historical conditions, the economic conditions, the racial conditions, um, have really set the stage for the disparities that we experience every day in terms of health outcomes. In Marin County, for example, you know, 15-year difference in life expectancy between Ross and Marin City, 15 years. Um, and that's the data, you know, that's, that's the fact, and it's up to us to apply meaning to that and, and really make a decision about whether or not we think that's acceptable. And I think we share values that we probably think that's not acceptable and is unfair at a certain kind of profound level. Um, and, and so I see the social movement that's happening around racial justice as being you know, connected to those things that we've been really trying to grapple with and really dedicating ourselves to, to, to correcting um, as healthcare providers in the safety net for, for most of our careers. What's been your biggest surprise or challenge uh, so far in the COVID, COVID fight? Yeah. Um, well, there's, there's sort of the personal and the professional. I think uh, you know, my personal challenge was that I got infected with COVID-19 um, about a week after we had announced the first shelter in place um, and spent three weeks pretty sick you know, at home which offered me a, a perspective on you know, a firsthand experience that I think I brought to, brought to the work, offered some insights into what it is we're actually trying to prevent and, and how important it is to prevent it. Yeah. Um, and also, I think, you know, taught me how important it is, again, to those social factors. Um, you know, I spent about 10 days in bed where I was just unable to barely do anything. Uh -huh. You know, my wife is a physician. She was able to help manage that illness, you know, and get me fed. And, um, and I, have, I live in a house where I'm able to successfully isolate. I have my own bathroom. You know, our patients don't have those sorts of privileges. Um, and so part of our collective COVID-19 response, I think, really needs to be acknowledging the social dimension. Um, we're seeing you know, dramatic increases in cases in communities where Marin Community Clinics is serving. Um, and it's partly based on the you know, low income and, and people really not being able to work from home. You know, being on the, the backbone of our workforce has mm -hmm. been out there getting exposed. Um, and then bringing illness potentially back into close quarters where they have multiple people living in, in you know, one or two, you know, one or two bedrooms. Um, lots of transmission within the household. So offering that, that resource and that support, income support, employment support, um, and the clinical support that's unique to that constellation of, of challenges, I think is something that um, kind of my own experience mm -hmm. has, has helped us build out kind of those, those, those supports. Um, yeah. So that's been the, you know, part of the, the personal. And then I think you know, the other challenge just overall is the, is the uncertainty um, you know, we don't, as a scientist and as, and as a clinician, you, yeah. you, you're, you're wanting to use evidence-based, data-driven practice. And here you have a, a profound threat to our collective health without a lot of it's a novel science. novel virus. <laughs> it's a, it's, 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 exactly. It's, yeah. a, it's a novel virus, and it means that, you know, we don't, we just have six months total under our belts, yeah. right? Um, and so... Uh, Trying to trying to eke what you can out of the evidence that's 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 coming forward, to apply that to our community, which sometimes means changing your mind, um, it has been a challenge. Yeah. Well, great. Well, thanks so much for all that you do every day, Matt. You you know make a profound difference on the health and well-being of our community, and uh, it's not lost on most of us in the community. So thank you, and really thank you for your collaboration with Marin Community Clinics, and thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you, Matesh and, and Marin Community Clinics and, and donors and supporters. Um, th this is, this is uh, you know, an organization that uh, dollars go a long way um, towards addressing some of the most important challenges that we face across the board. Thank you. Coming up, I'm going to pass the baton to two of MCC's most extroverted leaders, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jose Chivras and Chief Behavioral Officer Dr. Lizzie Horowitz. Together, they're going to lead a live fund and need auction. We'll ask you to donate what you can to support our efforts to better the health of our community. Thank you in advance for your generosity. Hello. Good evening. My name is Dr. Jose Chivras, and I want to thank Dr. Hessel for being such an extraordinary kind individual to introduce uh, Dr. Horowitz and myself. Um, as you noted, I had a face mask on. The reason I had one on is 
I just finished seeing my last patient and I apologize, I'm still in work clothes. However, I'm so excited to be here, to be able to be here for the 2020 Summer Solstice Marin Community Clinics. And this is gonna be such a great evening. What I wanna do is keep that mask off today, but I want you to know how important it is for you to continue to wear face coverings. I wear a mask because I care about you. This is an insidious virus. It's a pandemic. And so what I wanna do is I'm alone here and I know Dr. Popot and, and Dr. Willis, we heard from them and they, they have their masks off. It's better for me to communicate like this. If I was with a mask, it wouldn't be the same. I wouldn't have the opportunity to be able to share with you some of the great information that we're gonna be able to share. Now, these are extraordinary times and I know since January or February, how challenging it's been for all of us. But tonight we're gonna to explain what it is that we're doing in the fund, fund a need for three different things. Now I wanna introduce Dr. Lizzie Horvitz. She's our chief behavioral health officer at Marin Community Clinics. And Lizzie, how are you doing? Jose, I'm good. It's, it's good to see you, even though we're not together in the usual setting. Hey, it's only, it's only a, we're not socially distant anything. We've got all our friends at home tonight and what we're doing is physically distancing ourselves. That's we right. are socially together tonight. That's right, that's right. And you know, before we go any further, y'all, if you haven't sent in your selfie, send it in now. The uh, little box is at the bottom of your screen. This is your last chance to make history with that selfie. So send it in now, if you haven't already. So should we transition to the fund and need, Jose? Should we go for it? Yeah, why not? You know, here, here's what's, here's what's going to happen tonight. Tonight, what we're going to do is try and raise some, some needed funds for MCC, for some of the programs that we have. And I know you've looked at the program, but there's, there's three areas that are really, really critical and important to all of us. The, the health of our community is directly related to all of us. And Marin County is one of the most affluent communities in the United States. And MCC is one of the best health centers and community health centers across the country, always in the top 10 percent now for everything. And so what I want to do today is start with a $25,000 fund in need donation, if possible, if you can afford it. Now, let me tell you, everybody has a different amount that they can donate tonight, and it doesn't make any difference. If you can give $10, that's great from the, from the deepness in the bottom of your heart. It's really important. What I want to do is just share a couple words that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said in the past, and I just want you to think about this for a little bit, and then just just sit here and think of this. Uh, this is an important time in history, and we are making history. And you know, you know, the best thing about history is the way that we can predict history is to create history. And MCC is all about innovation and everything else that that we do in healthcare. And so, healthcare is not about doctors. I used to be a demigod at, at, at MD. That was about thirty years ago. Now I know that it takes the entire community to take care of one human being. And Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service. The only need is a heart full of grace and a, and a soul full of love. And so the reason I bring that to your attention tonight is that I want to just praise all healthcare workers across the world they're heroic, they're heroes. MCC employees are extraordinary. They're heroes every day taking care of folks. And I'm gonna to talk to you about our respiratory clinic in a minute here, but I just want you to hear how important it is that it takes the hospital, our hospitals in Marin County to take care of folks, the nursing homes, there's social services, there's food insecurity, housing. We heard from some of our leaders in, in the public health arena, Dr. Willis, and everyone else that takes care of folks. So I just want you to remember that it really takes everyone to take care of human lives. And so respiratory clinics, what can I tell you about them? What are they? Respiratory clinics are where individuals who have upper respiratory tract symptoms come into our facilities. And what they do is they don't come in through the same door that folks that don't have symptoms come in. They come through a separate, separate track and they're they're utilizing PPE, which you've heard a lot of. I had a little bit on today, but I mean, you know, they're wearing spacesuits. They've got their N95s, they got a face shield. And what we want to do when we go there, for example, is we have families who come in and mothers, 
fathers. An example at the hospital, a mother delivered a baby. The mother had COVID positive. She was COVID positive. She came through our respiratory clinic and we took care of her. We held her. We took care of her. The hospital staff did an excellent job. Our pediatricians are doing rounds and taking care of people at the hospital. They come back and they need our help. And in the respiratory clinic, we try and take care of folks there. And either we diagnose them with COVID-19 or not. And if they are, then we take, take care of them and we send them off to be isolated and quarantined. And that's where it takes all of us to do this. I'm going to talk a little bit more about it, but what I want to do. Well, can I jump in, Jose? Come on along. Go ahead. You know, I'll keep talking. It's such a great example. Marin Community Clinics has stepped up to this challenge of this pandemic. We have changed the way we provide healthcare on a dime in light of COVID-19 and the respiratory clinics uh, is one example. We've developed new mechanisms to serve the 38,000 people who turn to us for healthcare. We're keeping both our staff and our patients safe, just like Jose just ex explained. And y'all, we need your help tonight because we're trying to raise $100,000 so that we can continue these respiratory clinics. We're also raising money for behavioral health uh, to help the many, many people and many more people now who are suffering from depression, anxiety, and trauma, um, and to modify our dental operatories to reduce COVID transmission. And I know, Jose, you're planning on talking a little Wait, more about stop, it. Stop. I just got it. I'm I just got it. We have Rich and Nancy Robbins just pledged $25,000. This is a matching pledge. Yes. I'm going to yes. get out of this. I'm going to get going now because... I, I've been at work too long. I hope you don't mind, Lizzie. No, it's, it's time. Hard. It's going to get hot here tonight. I'm going to change. You know what? Billy Crystal was going to be here last year, and then Tom Hanks this year. They both stood me up. But you know what? They might be pledging tonight. So let's see who else is going to pledge tonight. I've got Billy Crystal's coat from last year. So let's go. This is $25,000, Lizzie. $25, Are you just telling me? Explain to me what a matching fund is. Does that mean we were they're going to give 25k if we can raise 25k right now? Well, let's raise 100 tonight. Forget. Let's do this. Now, let's I think do it. let's just keep moving. Now, I think we're I think we're going to move to $20,000, $20,000 from anybody who's got $25,000 or 20,000. Lizzie, tell us a little bit more about some of the some of the things that we're doing. I'll tell you about the office visits. We had to switch over from routine office visit to telemedicine, telehealth in just minutes. We used to see a thousand people a day. We went to 300, we're back up to about 600. And so it is imperative that all of us participate in taking care of our community. Lizzie, how much do you got going there? Well, listen, I want to tell people how to how to put in that 25K, to put in that $20,000. So there's a little box at the bottom of your screen. It's a little chat box. All you do, you type in the amount, you type in your name and uh, someone from our staff will follow up with you to take your credit card, check any of that. Just go ahead, type it in. You can also send Jose a message. Tell him that he looks really good in his jacket. He's feeling really shy and insecure. He's an introvert, ladies and gentlemen. So please give him a little shout out when you send in your donation. So again, just type in your name the amount you're giving, and we will follow up in that chat box at the bottom of your screen. So I want you to know that we're seeing about 25% of our patients now face-to-face, -face, and we're going to see a few more as, as we move forward. But I want you to know that video conferencing, like we're doing right now, I can see you at home. You can see me here. What I want to let you know is that nobody's going to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you this because we are here for you. And to let you know, I'm personally going to thank Mr. Rich and Nancy Robbins for that donation and every cent that we get from everyone from the bottom of my heart. I wish I could be there in person. This is different than what we normally do. It is. But you know what, though? We are here together. This is the new normal for a bit. And I want you to just to continue, just continue to bid. We're at about $10,000 right now. $10,000 to whoever has $10,000 to do this for us. Lizzie, tell me a little bit about behavioral health. Oh, I'd be thrilled to tell you about behavioral health. You know, we have uh, turned on a dime transition to all telehealth uh, very quickly. We, uh, we are seeing a record number of patients, more than we've ever seen before. 
And uh, one example of something we were able to do, we sent out a text message to all MCC patients saying, hey, this is a stressful situation. Text back if you want to talk to a counselor. And um, we got 450 responses immediately. And so many of the responses were so heartfelt, saying things like, God bless you, MCC. Thank you. I'm so scared. And we were able to reach out and create a visit with all of those folks. So um, we, it, we were so thrilled um, to be able to do that and to serve our, um, to serve our patients in that way. You know, so, Lizzie, mm -hmm. well, Lizzie, what I was going to tell you is that right now when folks get diagnosed with positive COVID, they're usually unemployed. They, they, there's a lot of fear when I'm talking about behavioral health. There's depression, there's anxiety. And some of the things that we can do with some of your pledges are to give them oximeters. Let me tell you what an oximeter is. It's a little device when you go to the doctor and it measures your oxygen content in your lungs. And if, if we can get, you know, if we can get a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars, it will take care of 20 individuals. The reason we do that is we want to keep people out of the emergency departments. We want to give them a tool to be able to measure objectively their oxygenation of their lungs, COVID, gives people pneumonia and sometimes they're asymptomatic and they don't know it and it's too late. And this way we can give them a tool to be able to help them to be able to take care of themselves and not be so scared. One thing that's difficult is a fear is the unknown, but if we give them a tool, they can know that they're doing well. Another thing are the children. They need spacers. We're not using nebulizers anymore. They're dangerous. So we use spacers for them to use these meter dose inhalers with, with medication that helps them breathe better. And I will tell you, for $2,000, we can get 80 children these spacers that they wouldn't be able to afford. So so please, please think about that, about the kids. Go ahead, Lizzie. I need to give a shout out to Doris Hunker and Nancy Schlegel. Thank you. Thank you so much. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. This is generous donation. Thank you. This is going to help our dental clinics, our behavioral health clinics, our respiratory clinics so that we can provide the whole person care that everyone is accustomed to in Marin Community Clinics. Oh my goodness, and a huge donation from, from our Rosenberger Family Fund, $10,000 at the Marin Community Foundation. Thank That's you, great. thank there you. We there we go, Lizzie, Lizzie, let me just talk to you about behavioral health. You know, I did a fellowship Call in me. psychiatry, and the reason I did a fellowship in psychiatry, because I'm Swedish and my first language is Spanish. And so I'm fortunate to be able to do behavioral health consults in Spanish. However, there are very few individuals in Marin County or in the United States that have a behavioral health background. We need to hire some Spanish speaking individuals that can continue to help folks remotely during this crisis. They have no access or very little access to behavioral health. And you know what? I can tell you right now that Dr. Horvitz, her staff, have very few no-shows. They are able now with video conferencing to see folks and take care of them in their home every day. They don't have to take three buses and be there. They're there every day. Lizzie, tell me more about your behavioral health. Well, we are. We absolutely need to hire more clinicians, more staff to serve the increasing need that we're seeing in light of COVID-19. Uh, and you know, the total we have raised in this short time to update you, which is helping us reach these goals, is $36,250. Reach into your heart. Thank you. It's these kinds of funds that help us do the kind of innovative work that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Marika Holmgren, Kristen Turek, thank you, thank you, thank you. I see we see your funds coming in. Thank you. You know, Marin Community Clinics, as Jose said, is one of the top clinics in the country. Oh, I see Phil Burke and Mary keep Valenti. Going, keep Thank going, you. Keep going, Lizzie. Keep it going. Uh, you, you know, you, we are, oh, and Kristen Turek, it's, the names are coming too fast. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on now. Let's keep it going. You know, we are one of the top clinics in the country. We need to keep up our quality of care in the middle of this pandemic to be able to continue this being innovative. And the kinds of programs we're talking about, it's all about innovation. Let me just share with you something that's really important with COVID-19. Just because we're in the middle of a pandemic doesn't mean that people aren't still having strokes. They still have asthma. They still have diabetes. They still have hypertension. 
they still fracture extremities. Today, just a little while ago, I somebody that, that actually fell off a bicycle. People are still falling off their bicycles, and we have to take care of them. And so, unfortunately, he lost a few teeth. And so that gets me to, to dental care. We were seeing 75,000 people in Marin County annually. And with COVID-19, because of the aerosolization of this virus, we had to close all of our facilities. We want to open two of them July 1st. It's not the same world that it was pre-COVID. We're intra-COVID right now. And what we need to do right now is open up our dental facilities. Unfortunately, it's $5,000 per operatory. That's where the dentist sits you down and you have a fun time there and you don't get a massage and you don't get your nails done, but they fix your teeth. And so let me tell you something, since we've been closed, folks are still coming in only for emergencies, but we still need to take care of children and adults and be able to do orthodontics. And you know, people still need dentures. They still need to eat during COVID. So what we wanna do is restructure our dental facilities. It's $5,000 for the overhead UVC lighting. We need to have partitions so that this aerosolization doesn't. Our HVACs need to be upgraded. We've really got to circulate air through there. And let me tell you something, all of our dentists are heroes. Everybody in healthcare is a hero, but our dentists don't wear, the patient can't wear a mask. And so we need to protect them. They've got double suctioning devices. So if you want to help our dentists and our dentists, all of our dentists, they can't practice without your help. Yes, they wear N95s. Yes, they wear shields. But that, when they start drilling, things get up in the air and it puts everybody in danger. And let me tell you something. If you've ever had a toothache, you know that COVID is not going to cure it. You need a dentist. Lizzie, tell me what you got. Oh, my gosh. We are we are at $38,700. Sharin Vicaria. Lizzie, we got to get Henderson, to Jennifer Ranks, and John Cook, Leah Canverser, and Eric Garcia. Judith Ariano. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Some of our own people donating. Thank you, Elizabeth and Martin Sleeth. I see you. We are so grateful. We are at $40,700 for innovative care. Let me, Dental tell, you Lizzie, let me tell you something right now about MCC besides me being proud of being one of the team members there. We are one of the best health centers in 14 counties in Northern California. Why? Because of our medical assistants who are there every day, yes. every day, our front office, our call center, our QA department, our dentists, our doctors, our nurses. You know what? We have some of the most extraordinary individuals. Let me just say it. They are heroes. Healthcare right now and the team that we have are heroes and we need, we need to support our community. Let me tell you something, disasters, this is a pandemic, this is a worldwide pandemic. Disasters, let me tell you about disasters. They are taken care of locally. I don't think Washington, D.C. knows that we're doing this today. I don't, do you see anybody from D.C. right now on the chat? I doubt it. Who's here right now are all the champions in the community. Yes. All our sponsors. I want to thank all of the sponsors of the Solstice this year who are supporting MCC with this innovation and this COVID response, which is extraordinary. This is a lifetime opportunity to make a difference, to really change health care and re- Yes. Your health care. Tell me what you got, Lizzie. Well, and I think that so many of us have been feeling like, what can we do? And there is a sense of paralysis and lack of control about everything that's going on in the world. Well, you know, donating to Marin Community Clinics gives you some power to address this pandemic in our own community where there are huge disparities. So Susanna Clark, Sarah Haynes, and yes. Michael Sippa, Myra Levinson, you are heroes. Thank heroes. you. Thank They're you for heroes. helping us help our community. Absolute heroes. Listen, our dentists have really, really stepped up and are really taking some brave steps to take care of individuals. And we need the equipment, the partitions, the operatories, the UVC lighting that's overhead. And remember something, this, this fund to need is not complete tonight. You can continue to do this year round. You can also do it during the remainder of this program. And I really, I really have to tell you how important this is to me. Are, are we still there? Are we still there, Lizzie? Is people just like, oh my they gosh, they're coming in hot and heavy. Elizabeth Shaw. Let's just keep going. 
Let's David just... and Mary Sullivan. Ladies and gentlemen, we are getting there. Kathleen Woodcock, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, oh. I need to tell I need to tell everyone that the cost of Jose's jacket alone, we've got to make a certain amount. We gotta make our hundred thousand just to break even here. Look at this. Look at this. That's a I joke getting ready to start toasting people we're working you know this was report you know that what we're doing right now was recorded 18 times not this is live so let's go okay belinda godorama thank you thank you thank you belinda, belinda thank you guys you know, belinda? all right so oh, did you all did, i think they all got a bottle of wine in their gift basket and we no, they should be you know what they should healthcare be healthcare providers, but we also feel like if you want to pour a little more wine just to kind of loosen up, enjoy yourselves, we can't all be there together. Lizzie, um, yeah, tell me. You need to check my ID. Yeah, I do. We, I, yes, we, we, someone is coming to check it with I'm a just checking, I'm just checking. Lizzie, what I want to know, what I want to know from you is what it means to be a director of one of the best health centers in behavioral health in the United States, because you're extraordinary. Your staff is amazing. If you get on the phone with somebody or you see a patient today, it's different than it was in January. That's Folks right. are scared. They have food insecurity, housing insecurity, and it's a special place to be in healthcare right now. I read one of the, you know, one of the quotes from, from Dr. Martin Luther King about what it takes to be, famous but to have a calling and the individuals that we have in the community that we have all of our community partners the hospitals and everybody else i just want to tell you a little story i am so proud of our OBGYNs. they work tires tirelessly dr bear and also um jennifer Give, will you say their names dr I buyer to, i had them both wrong i shouldn't have taken that and what else both uh, of our, dr baron so Mickey, Mickey Barron is an extraordinary, well, they're both extraordinary, but you know what? They're up in the middle of the night delivering babies with COVID, mothers with COVID, fearlessly bringing them back to the clinics, taking care of them, and they recover. And so, you know, I know that, I know that there is no vaccine right now, and I know that there's no cure, and we need to live with this because let me tell you something. If there was an effective vaccine today, right now, and we gave a million people the vaccine every day, Next year, we'd still be talking about it because there's 330 million people in the United States. So what I'm telling you is you have to be careful washing your hands, make sure you're wearing a mask, make sure you socially distance, and don't believe people that, that, you know, that this is over. We're just in the middle of this, and so we really need your help to be able to prepare for this fall. This coming fall, when we have a flu, flu season, our respiratory clinics are going to be essential to keep people out of our hospitals, and we want to be able to, to be proactive and, and keep our hospital beds and our ICU beds and our ventilators available for those individuals that need them. So this is really local. Let me just share this one. Is, oh, go ahead, Jose. And I we've got some urgent questions coming in from the audience. So let's hear it. Let's hear it. Well, you know, there's a very serious question that we need to consider, which is, how much for your jacket? Well, that's um, it's up for bids. Hey, if you want to see this, this 100% virgin polyester. This it's is from virgin. North. Okay, people want to bid on this. Oh, let's, let's go. Let's, it's theirs. It's theirs. Hey, I'm taking it for the team right here. Live. Live right here. This is live from San Rafael, California. Let's go. I mean, virgin polyester. Can you listen? How much do you want to start at 10,000? Do we start at 10,000? I, you know, you know the value of your jacket. 10,000, 10,000, 10,000 right now for the jacket. I have, I have no. Enter it into the little box, y'all. This could be yours, a piece of history. You know, I have, idea. Is, I have an idea. What we can do is we can rent it. We can rent it for, for smaller amounts for the whole year. Come on. We'll give it to them for a week, a month, or a quarter, and then they can, they can all share. I'll even pay for the cleaners. Listen, if you want that jacket, you put in your best bid and, and say for the jacket, and we will we will make sure to take note of that. Now I see some other names. They haven't they haven't specified for the jacket. They haven't specified, but David and Mary Sullivan, Linda Lipstrew, 
Let's Tracy put it on. And Mark Let's Hessel. Lydia Ariano, I see your name again. Leonard Shaw, Susan and Alistair Cummings. Susan Weaver. Oh, Susan Let's Weaver. All buy it. Everybody Let's buy it. Here. Oh, oh my God. Wait, everybody stop. We got a 1K. Kristen Swenson pledging $1,000. $1,000 for Jose's jacket. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? That? Again, piece of history here. This entire auction is going to go live on in, in forever on YouTube. Remember, this is this was worn by Billy Crystal on Saturday Night Live in 2000 at the at the celebration, and then Tom Hanks wanted it tonight, and I said, "No, it's not happening, Tom. Tom, you stay in Australia. I love you, but you cannot have this jacket." Is he on there? Is he? Did he show up? Last time I talked to him, what's what's wrong with him? Come on, get him on here. Well, now we're at a thousand dollars for Jose's jacket. It looks like Let's get him on here. It might. Might be the owner of a new jacket, but more guys, don't lose your opportunity. I'll take it for the team, Lizzie. I will take it for the team. You know what? That that's just the way life is. You know, I've got another jacket. Should I should I take it off and send it to the cleaners? Or Listen, should we? I think that can be up to the highest bidder if they I want it. I have an idea. I have an idea. We're gonna do a raffle at the end. We can let people think about it. Drink a little wine. Enjoy your family. Let them think about it. And then at the end, if it's okay with you, Lizzie, at the end we can announce the highest bidder, and we can I have. I think a that's a great on. idea. We can have individuals just think. Just look at this. You could wear this in Vegas, not this year, but next year. You could wear it. I don't know. I was supposed to be in Sorrento today, or maybe in Sicily. I was going to be in Italy this this week, and I could wear it at the casino there, right? I mean, you can wear that to shelter in place in style. Hey, why uh, not? You know, I, yeah. Dan Hare and Andrea. Control this virus, but we can control our own destiny. And I'm going to leave you again. And I keep quoting Dr. Martin Luther King because these are important times and you're watching TV or you're reading and you know what I'm talking about. I don't need to, I don't need to say it. It looks like I'm Swedish and I wasn't in the sun all day today. I was working, but, but, and. Spanish is my first language. I actually dream in colors, more information than you needed, and in Spanish. But Dr. Martin Luther King said something I think is beautiful. The time is always right to do what is right. The time is always right to do what is right. And the right thing to do is to support your community locally whether it's MCC, whether it's shelters, whether it's individuals that, that need some help. But right now, more than ever in history, in my lifetime, and I'm not 29. I, 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 some people think I look 29. I had a birthday this year in March. But this is historic times. And I really am appreciative that you allow Lizzie and myself into your home and you allow us to spend time here and I think it's about time that we transition. Yeah, I want to, a couple of things, and thank you so much for that beautiful quote from Dr. Martin Luther King, and especially with everything going on in our country right now, I think, you know, it is so, so apt. We're about halfway to our goal of $100,000. We're at $49,000. Uh, Matesh and Sabrina Popot, Matesh and Sabrina, uh, Benita McLaren and Ken Shapiro, in honor of Dr. Willis are contributing. Thank you. Uh, thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. Hazel Marston also saying hi to Jose. Uh, so I'm sending, uh, I, I'm getting memos. I Listen, uh, this is- uh, Is it Tom Hanks? Is it Tom Hanks? Ha Hazel Marston. I don't know, but Barbara Dalmo Thank you. I'm sorry if I just butchered your last name, but thank you for your your donation to healthcare, to equality, to equity in our community as we face one of the biggest challenges we faced in the last century from a healthcare perspective, from a human rights perspective. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please continue to donate. The show is not over. Uh, we are gonna transition, but the pledges are, can keep rolling. We're at 1K for the jacket. Can you do better? Think about it otherwise. Come on now. There's going to be a lot more going on. Hey, 
seriously, this is oh, important. Please. Exactly. So, so keep contributing. Again, you can put a mount in that little box and you can give even after the show ends. So please keep no, going. Not the show ends. They can give all year. All year, all, all night, all year, all day, all week, whatever That's works for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What I want to do is transition now, and I'm going to be serious. I'm going to take this off because I don't. What I want to do is make sure that folks understand how serious I'm about how beautiful this this beautiful virgin polyester sequence Nordstrom jacket is, and I want to make sure it's nice and clean for you. Okay, so I want to do this. I'll tell you why. This almost looks like I'm doing something crazy, but. We have to transition to something serious. We have a distinguished individual that we're going to hear from today, an individual who is a pioneer and very much a champion of health care in our community, the distinguished Senator Mike McGuire. We're going to hear from him now. So thank you so much. Hi, this is Mike McGuire, State Senator, and I think you'd agree with me. These these past few months have been so incredibly tough for so many. But this pandemic has demonstrated more than ever how lucky we are to have this amazing healthcare team at Marin Community Clinics. These professionals, they're, they're keeping quality healthcare close to home for nearly 40,000 of our neighbors. We need to recognize the doctors and the dentists, the nurse practitioners, the mental health professionals and the nurses from Marin Community Clinics who are dedicating their lives to keep all of us safe and healthy. And today we wanna to recognize them. And we wanna recognize Marin's health champions. That's Dr. Willis, Marin County's amazing public health officer. That's Dr. Sowerby and that's Melissa Osheroff. We wanna say how grateful we are, how grateful we are for your hard work. And to all of you who are joining us this evening, we invite you, we invite you to invest in quality healthcare. I know that you're getting hit up a lot, but we're gonna ask that you reach deep in your pockets tonight to help MCC fund ongoing coronavirus response, to help them fund more bilingual behavioral health providers, and to be able to modernize their dental program. Thank you so much. Thank you for investing in quality healthcare. Together, we're gonna to continue to build a healthier, in stronger Marin County. And good evening, everyone. It is my great pleasure and honor to be presenting the Community Health Youth Champion Award to Melissa Osheroff. Melissa is a peer health promoter with our Novato Teen Clinic. And we could not do it without our peer health promoters. They provide peer education on reproductive and sexual health, they are there to provide comfort to the teens that come to teen clinic for them to understand that it is confidential and it is free and we are there for them. Melissa is a critical part of that, of the services that we provide and we could not be prouder of her. She is a recent grad of San Marin High School and she will be going on to UC San Diego in the fall, majoring in bioengineering. A phenomenal, brilliant young woman. And I would like to present this award to her on behalf of Marin Community Clinics to let her know just how important she is to the community, to North Marin Community Services, to Marin Community Clinics. We are so very proud of her. I'd like to start off by thanking my supervisors for nominating me for this year's award, my parents for teaching me the value of hard work, and lastly, everyone attending this year's summer solstice celebration for their dedication to the North Marin Community Clinics. I began volunteering at the Novato Teen Clinic right when I had turned 16, and to put this in perspective, this is before I even got my driver's license. Through these past two years of volunteering, I've learned so much about physical and mental health, as well as public speaking and communication. Interacting with patients from diverse socioeconomic backgrounds and ages 
has allowed me to become a more compassionate friend, daughter, and worker. With my friends, I make sure to always be attentive and patient. At home, I've taken on more responsibilities, like helping watch my special needs brother every day during this quarantine. This past May, I recently committed to UC San Diego, majoring in bioengineering. This study allows me to help design artificial joints, ultrasound devices, and prosthetic limbs. It is my hope that with what I learned from these technologies, I can help design medical devices that create more affordable and effective alternatives. Volunteering for the North Marin Community Clinics has been such a rewarding experience that it has never once felt like work. Once again, I'd like to thank all the members of the community that keep the clinics up and running. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce our next honoree at uh, this year's Summer Solstice event. I would say it's long overdue. Um, I think many of you, if not most of you here, if not all of you, know Dr. Tim Sowerby. Uh, he is just one of our real gems in our community and one of many um, really highly skilled and wonderful human beings that we have supporting Marin Community Clinics, our patients, our mission, and in fact, our own staff here. Um, Dr. Sowerby, uh, just by way of brief biography, uh, did his training in London. He did medical school there and a residency in family medicine and surgery before moving to Southern California, where he did an internal medicine residency in uh, Kaiser in Los Angeles, uh, followed by his gastroenterology fellowship. He then moved north and joined the Marin Gastroenterology Group. At the time, was run by Dr. Al Barner and Dr. Danny Kao, both of whom, by the way, were staunch and still remain staunch advocates uh, for Marin Community Clinics and uh, had many uh, good years of support from both of them uh, clinically, and since then, uh, I think both financially and morally. So Tim has followed in their footsteps and has, uh, since 2001 has been one of our really strong community partners. Uh, as I said, Tim is just basically a wonderful human being. Uh, he's humble, he's kind, and he's extremely skilled. His clinical skills are second to none in the area. He uh, not only supports our mission, uh, with our patients, but also supports our clinicians. Uh, he is always available for what we call curbside mm -hmm. consults or formal consultations. Um, and he's been doing this now for almost 20 years. Uh, and in the process has also engaged his entire uh, uh, gastroenterology group to also support him in community clinics. It's been quite a pleasure working with him over these years. Uh, in addition to his work supporting our mission, he also does additional volunteer work um, for Operation Access which is a volunteer organization in the Bay Area, which provides uh, surgical and in this case, endoscopic sur uh, services to uninsured or underinsured patients. Um, so Tim, uh, it's really a delight to be able to honor you this year. It's well-deserved, as I said, long overdue, and uh, I look forward to the continuing partnership and just can't express our appreciation enough. And before handing over to Dr. Sowerby, I would uh, first like to read, a certificate of recognition presented uh, by the California State Legislature. It reads, certificate of recognition presented to Tim Sowerby, MD, community health champion, honored by Marin Community Clinics. Presented in celebration of your two decades of volunteer service you have provided at Marin Community Clinics, as well as volunteering for Operation Access. We are grateful that you made your way from, Eng from England to Marin, where you have been a vital link among providers who see that our residents have opportunities received quality medical care, dated June 24, 2020, and signed by Assemblyman Mark Levine and State Senator Mark McGuire. It's well-deserved. Thanks again, Tim. Thank you for honoring me this evening. My first visit to Marin Community Clinic was memorable. The old clinic building was, was hard to find. Just a couple of rather shabby portable buildings hidden behind a hospital. I still remember the creaky floors and the plywood walls. My first patient was a Spanish-speaking gentleman new to the clinic with severe Crohn's disease. Without consistent primary or specialty care, his disease was uncontrolled with frequent visits to the emergency room with abdominal pain and multiple hospitalizations. His pain and diarrhea getting progressively worse. It was really impossible for him to work. Crohn's disease is hard to manage even under the best of circumstances. When there's a language barrier, 
no access to insurance or public benefits, it's close to impossible. Marin Community Clinic, however, has a way of overcoming the impossible. And here's how. When I see a patient at the clinic, I have medical assistants to interpret, medical scribes to document, case managers to access benefits and assistance programs. And this wonderful and dedicated team makes great care a reality, even under the most difficult of circumstances. Thanks to this team, my patient started an effective medication, his Crohn's was controlled, and he started to work again. Most importantly, he gets the follow-up care that he needs. He hasn't seen the inside of a hospital or an emergency department in 20 years. Marin Community Clinic really makes a difference to patients' lives. Thank you. We are back. We are back with some announcements and our raffle. Jose, how are you holding up? Hey, I'm fine. I'm excited because we're almost done. You know, we're live, live from Marin Community Clinics in Marin County. This is a Ooh. live presentation. Yeah, Lizzie, live. you're amazing. Live. No do-overs. There's no do-overs. No do Why do it over when we can do it right the first time? Thank you to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I have some exciting announcements. So thank you, first of all, Barbara Ball, Bertrand and Roll Vandeville, Joel Christ, Christie, Raquel Pondy, who thanks yeah. us for helping her grandfather. Thank you, Raquel, Dwayne and Leah Andrews. Leah. Amazing, amazing, thank you. Bane Sigurdsson, Isabel Mihai, thank you, thank you. Also, Kristen Swenson is now the owner, the proud owner of the Jose Chibras Billy Crystal jacket. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. Thank you. Well, what do you say, Jose? Should we should we pull a raffle for an amazing our amazing uh, prize that that we are uh, raffling off? You know, I think it's a great idea. We need to thank all of our sponsors, all of our board of directors, all of our administrative staff for the leadership during these turbulent times. And these these are tidal waves that we're that we've been navigating every day. And with the leadership, we will do extraordinarily well. We will, there will, there will be another day when COVID is gone, there will be a cure, there will be a vaccine. But for now, thank you for your support. And Lizzie, let's give somebody a beautiful prize. Let's go ahead and put it out. How many names let's are in there? A thousand names? Wait, we've got everybody's names in here. And let's say what we're, so we are raffling some Schramsberg sparkling wine, Tamales Bay oysters, what? Yes. Tastings and Marin Symphony tickets for next season because oh, yeah. we'll be back next season. It'll right? all be set. It's all set. Wine tastings are for four at Alpha Omega Wine and Cake Bread Cellars. Guys. Oh, I want that. Pick my name, Lizzie. Come on. in here. Are y'all ready for this? I'm ready for this. Are you ready for this? Yes, Lizzie. We are ready for this. Get it, Lizzie. Mix it all up. Mix it all up. Just all right. pick my name up. How many put in there are mine? 150. Let's go, Lizzie. Jose, Jose, Jose. Steve Fox. Yes! Steve me. Fox, you are the proud winner of our gift basket. Congratulations. Oh, Lizzie, Lizzie, you were great. This was so much fun. It was fun. And you know, I think I can speak for both of us when I, I know I can speak for both of us when I say how proud we both are to work at Marin Community Clinics how grateful we are for all of you, our supporters, um, our biggest cheerleaders in the community. You guys are our heroes and we are just so proud to serve. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your contributions, especially now more than ever. Um, and we so look forward to being together with you all again next year, we hope in person. Don't we hope that? Absolutely. Let me just let me just tell you something from the bottom of my heart. We are so fortunate to be in the best county in the United States. There's 58 counties. Where better to live and practice medicine and take care of human lives than Marin County? I personally am living my dream, and I am privileged to be taking care of the individuals that we take care of every day. It's it's amazing. And let me tell you something. What's amazing about MCC? are our staff, 
the commitment, the heroes, they're extraordinary. Every day, every day, Lizzie, the behavioral health folks, our dentists, our doctors, our nurses, I don't have time to talk about everybody in the community itself. Amazing community. Let's make a difference in this COVID response. Continue to give all year. Thank you so much. Thank and you, you have everyone. a wonderful evening. You guys are amazing. Take and care I'm of yourselves. To everybody and toast you. Cheers. 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 Chin, salud. Gracias. Adios. Vamos a hacer un español. Si se puede. Adios. Si se puede. Adios. <laughs> this was too much fun, huh? Do we get to do this again? Is this the first take or do we get to do it three more times? This was just a misunderstanding, right? Is this the outtake? Lizzie, when do we get to do it again? Wait a minute. Cut us off. Cut us off. No.